What are cathode spots? How are they formed? What are their properties and why do they seem to have self-similar patterns in the emitted light and arc erosion traces? Cathode spots are known to produce plasma from cathode material through a moving process. A lot of research is being conducted to try and understand the nature of the solid to plasma phase transition. One of the difficulties in studying this is the very small scale and very short durations of the arc spots, as well as the complexity of the physical processes and the environmental conditions involved. Early observations of cathode spots identified the important role of the surface chemistry on ignition conditions. In the 1970s, two distinct groups of spots were defined. Unless the cathode is specially treated, the surface of a cathode has contamination in the form of oxides and dust particles. Type 1 appear on a contaminated surface, and type 2 appear on a clean surface. The presence of contamination reduces the critical field strength for spot ignition meaning that it is easier to ignite. Most literature on vacuum arcs focus on type 2 spots. This is largely because the conditions for its formation are well defined and are easy to reproduce. The duration of cathode spots is several tens of nanoseconds and the size of the cathode spots is several micrometers. One of the most striking features of cathode spots is that almost all the parameters are fluctuating, like arc burning voltage, power input, ion production, electron temperature, ion charge state and velocity, microparticle density and velocity. Perhaps the most obvious one is the motion of the spots on the cathode surface. Spot motion is not the motion of the matter, but a process associated with ignition and extinction of active emission sites. These are sites where electrons are emitted and in the process plasma and microparticles are also generated. Generally, these fluctuations are considered a nuisance, and the way it is overcome is by averaging the data, but maybe a key to understanding what is going on is hidden in that momentary data. Over the years, pieces of evidence emerged which showed that many of the features of cathode phenomena were fractal. Let's take a look at some of these. Random walk of cathode spots. Here we see the movement of the discharge along a path. It is not the spot itself that is moving, but rather the location of ignition of emission sites. Random walk is a discrete fractal exhibiting stochastic self-similarity on large scales. But self-similarity is cut off as scale approaches the elementary step width. In a simple random walk, the next position depends only on the current position of the current emission site. It has no memory of all the other previous positions. Assuming the arc process on a clean metal surface, then all sites next to the active site have approximately the same probability to serve as the next emission site. This will generate a random pattern. In general, cathode materials are not perfectly clean and surface temperatures will also vary. This will in turn alter the ignition probability distribution. Experiments by Kraft and Stutchenkov showed that arcing on contaminated surfaces is preferred and leads to type 1 spots, while arcing on metallic clean surfaces is relatively difficult leading to type 2 spots. Loosely speaking, the arc preferred to burn with type 1 spots. The cleaning action of arc erosion will markedly reduce the ignition probability of locations where the arc has already burned. This means that the next emission is much more likely to be ignited at locations that still have a non-metallic or other dielectric layer present, and it will avoid clean surfaces. This feature has been utilized in arc cleaning of steel surfaces where oxide surfaces were intentionally created to optimize the cleaning effect. If the arcing occurs in a reactive gas environment or poor vacuum, the surface can quickly become contaminated as the metal atoms on the cathode surface will react with oxygen or water from the residual gas. This will lead to a very random pattern rather than seeking non-metallic site patterns. If arcing of the cathode surface occurs in an ultra-high vacuum, prolonged arcing may eventually completely remove the oxide layer. This too will lead to a random pattern, but this time of type 2 spots. There is much we still do not understand about this random walk and self-avoiding walks. 
Investigations into clean, well-arced cathodes has shown that sometimes, after a short cool-down time, a previously active and still hot emission site may preferably reignite. Fractal patterns in multi-spot arc traces. Closely related to the random walk and self-avoiding walk patterns are those left on cathodes by multi-spot discharges. These patterns are remarkably similar to Lichtenberg figures. Self-similarity in optical emission patterns. The fractal behaviour is also seen in the light distribution from the spots themselves. Power law distribution of macroparticles. In the explosive formation of plasma, craters are formed, which have become a signature of cathode arcs. Closely related to the explosive formation of plasma is the formation of droplets which are referred to as microparticles. It is well known that smaller microparticles are much more frequent than larger ones. Studies of this not only confirm the power law of size distribution, but also indicate that a fractal dimension may be defined. An observer looking at an electron microscope photograph of microparticles would be unable to decide which magnification was used. Ignition conditions and spot fragments. A spot cell or fragment is an emitting structure or emission site. This is part of what is typically seen as one more or less blurred cathode spot. It can be assumed that each fragment leaves a crater behind. Larger craters would require the production of many fragments. An arc spot emission site is ignited when a location on the cathode surface surpasses a critical field strength, leading to thermal runaway. The critical surface field is a function of surface conditions and cathode material, and the actual field depends on the arc voltage and local plasma sheath conditions. While critical field and field enhancements are well described for protrusions of clean metal, field enhancement due to charge up is less accessible to modelling. Experimental evidence of easy ignition of spot fragments on surfaces with dielectric layers points to an enhanced ignition probability due to dielectrics. An active plasma emitting spot fragment will increase its area in time due to heat conduction. This will mean that the power density will decrease because the current density decreases. Depending on the surface conditions, the following scenarios are possible. Number one, at least one location near the original spot fulfills the conditions for exceeding the critical field. A new mission site is formed that is electrically in parallel to the original site. Due to the heating of the parent site, it is likely that the new site will have less total resistance and therefore would provide favourable conditions compared to the parent site. It will therefore take over the current from the original spot fragment and accelerate the cooldown of the parent. Number two, if many sites have an oxide layer, this might mean ignition could occur easily and many fragments may be ignited that operate electrically in parallel. They compete for the available current and associated power distribution, and their plasma will promote the ignition of yet more emission sites. This will lead to a shorter active state resulting in smaller craters, low cathode erosion and low plasma and light emission. Number three, no location initially exceeds the critical field conditions. The original spot will still reduce its power density after the original explosive stage due to the heat conduction. This means that the spot will cease to provide sufficient electrons and plasma. The impedance of the discharge increases and the burning voltage will increase. Voltages much higher than the open circuit voltage of the power supply can be generated due to the inductive response of the arc circuit. The rising voltage will lead to an increase of the electric field strength on the cathode surface, which may create the conditions required for spot ignition. If, however, the conditions are still not met, the arc will spontaneously be extinguished. From this, we can see that spots undergo several stages. The pre-explosion stage, the ignition stage, the hot emissive stage, and lastly, the cool-down stage. If we consider the ignition phase, it should be obvious that there is a marked difference in the probability of ignition around an emission site with or without a transverse magnetic field. In the presence of a transverse magnetic field, the actual symmetry is broken, and there will end up being a preferred direction.
Vacuum arc cathode spots consist of fragments or cells, which may also be described as emission sites. No conclusive evidence of a truly elementary spot structure has been provided, and therefore even smaller physical substructures may exist. The onset of electron emission and plasma generation can be described as the ignition of an emission site. Ignition occurs when the actual local field strength exceeds a critical field value. This will depend on the cathode material, nano and microscale surface geometry, as well as on dielectric layers, particulates and other field enhancing conditions. Ignition occurs much more readily when dielectric layers and contaminations are present, and therefore a large number of spots may ignite, which operate electrically in parallel, competing for the available power. In contrast, in the absence of field enhancing dielectrics, ignition is less probable and power is concentrated in a small number of fragments. The visual appearance of spot motion leads to the suggestion of self-similarity. This is manifested in both the patterns of light emitted as well as the arc erosion craters. Experimental power spectra showed characteristic brown and near brown noise. And finally, macroparticle distribution also shows a self-similar nature down to the resolution limit. I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you would like to support the channel, I have now enabled Super Thanks, which should be down there below. Alternatively, you can support me via PayPal and Patreon, and if you are interested, I have a merchandise store with a whole variety of content from caps to mugs to t-shirts and more. Links to all of these will be down in the description. As always, be brave, be curious. The truth is waiting for us. Until next time.